My dear brothers and sisters, after walking together in this 33 days of preparation following St. Louis de Montfort's spirituality of total consecration to Our Lady, after placing oneself in the hands of the Blessed Mother, let us recall once again that Mary will lead us to Jesus and the very reason why the saint is teaching us to establish a perfect devotion to Our Lady is in order to establish a solid and perfect devotion to our Lord. It is therefore our hope that our Marian consecration will lead us to Eucharistic adoration. The best way to go and adore our Lord in the most blessed sacrament is to spend time with Him, with the Blessed Mother, as our model adorer. Jesus left us His Mother to be the Mother and model of adorers. We could imagine how the Virgin Mary adores our Lord perfectly. All of Mary's life taken as a whole may be summed up in one word, adoration. For adoration is the perfect service to God and it embraces all the duties of the creature toward the Creator. St. Peter Julian Amar says, and I quote, it was Mary who first adored the Incarnate Word, and Mary's adoration was more pleasing to Him than that of all the angels and of gods. The saint continues, Mary continued to adore our Lord first in His hidden life at Nazareth, afterward His apostolic life, and finally on Calvary, where her adoration became an intense suffering. And we could also add with certainty that Mary adores our Lord, with great love and devotion in the Eucharist when St. John the Apostle celebrates the Mass. My dear brothers and sisters, we notice here the nature of Our Lady's adoration. She adores our Lord according to the different states of Jesus' life in the joyful, luminous, sorrowful, and glorious mystery. In one of our series, we talk about intimacy with our Lord through devotion to our Lady. In the Eucharist, or in the Eucharistic adoration, we establish an intimate union with God with the help of the Blessed Mother. The Holy Eucharist is also called Holy Communion, Catechism number 1331. Communion is to be one with God. Our Lord says very clear, He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. This is communion, to be one with our Lord. This intimate union that our Lord so desired in Holy Communion begins in the present, not yesterday, for it's gone, nor in the future, for the future is still to come. Today is the day the Lord has made. Eucharistic adoration is the need for our time. For so many evils are threatening our society, in your country, in my country, in the whole world, especially in the family. What we need is to go back to Jesus and to receive once again His graces through the Blessed Mother to counter all these evils. And Jesus is not far from us, for He is truly present in the most holy Eucharist, ready to welcome us. What is needed is a humble and contrite heart like the prodigal son described in the Gospel of St. Luke. If you think you are the worst person in the world, come to Jesus with a humble and contrite heart and ask for the grace of good confession. If you come to our Lord for Eucharistic adoration, you bring joy to the Eucharistic heart of Jesus. I would like to share this invitation taken from Bishop James Condon's pastoral letter, Love Made Visible, and I quote, I encourage all Catholics to make adoration of the Blessed Sacrament a daily part of life and to be committed to Holy Hour of Eucharistic adoration at least once a week, whenever possible, before the exposed Blessed Sacrament. End of quotes. Words from the shepherd to his flock. One final thing is a challenge for all to move forward from Marian consecration to Eucharistic adoration, a continuous formation of souls, living a life of holiness, sharing and teaching others. 
children, friends, workers, and other people about consecration to Our Lady and to commit a time for Eucharistic adora adoration during the week. The Eucharistic adoration is the urgent need and the glorious mission of our time to bring back people to God in His Eucharistic table. Where do we go from here? Now that we have consecrated ourselves to Jesus through Mary, we might ask, now what? I would like to offer five simple points that will help give traction to the powerful experience of God's grace that we have received in the consecration to Mary. Number one, one of the most fruitful ways to live our consecration is through the daily rosary. We encounter the mysteries of Christ with the aid of Mary, whose faith and insight surpasses all the saints and angels combined. If you currently do not pray the rosary, start by committing to perhaps just one decade or two a day, and then pray the full rosary each and every Sunday. Number two, Mary is a one-way street that leads only to Christ, her Son. We encounter Christ most profoundly in this life through the sacraments. Our consecration should lead us not only to a more frequent reception of the sacraments, but also to a deeper participation through the maternal heart of Mary that was so deeply devoted to her Lord. Daily Mass is offered throughout the diocese. Be honest when you ask yourself, can I make time to attend Mass daily? Mary helps us to be more disposed to the grace and action of the Holy Spirit. With the daily recitation of the Rosary, if you do not currently attend daily Mass, start by committing to one or two days a week. Frequent confession must also be a goal. Blessed are the pure of heart, for they shall see God. The Sacrament of Reconciliation, at least once a month, would be a great goal to shoot for. Number three, Eucharistic Adoration. In my pastoral le letter, Love Made Visible, I encourage all of our people in the Diocese of Lincoln to visit our Lord present in the Blessed Sacrament. There are many adoration chapels around the city and in our different uh, parishes and, and towns throughout the diocese. By spending quiet time with the Lord before love made visible, we deepen our friendship with Jesus, we come to understand the Mass in a more profound way, and we allow the Lord to speak to our heart. Heart speaks to heart. Number four, as St. Jerome says, ignorance of Scripture is ignorance of Christ. We must not let it be said of anyone consecrated to Mary that they are ignorant of Jesus Christ. Mary's Immaculate Heart contemplated the Word of God as she kept all these things reflecting on them in her own heart. Commit to at least 10 minutes a day of prayerfully reading the sacred scriptures. Start with the four Gospels, which reveal the life of our Lord himself. Let us recommit ourselves to a prayerful reading of the sacred scriptures. And number five, we need to renew our consecration to Mary at least once a year. None of us have completely given ourselves totally to Jesus through Mary. It's an ongoing journey. With each consecration, we strive to give more of our will, our intellect, and our emotions, our relationships, our possessions, our time, everything, to the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. We entrust ourselves to the same Lord that Mary entrusted herself to. With her help, may we strive to enter the narrow gate and someday enjoy with her eternity, face to face with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. May God bless you in your journey.